On today's video, I'm going to take this old school vintage website and turn it into this modern website. And while this design might not be award winning, it sure is much more user friendly and modern. And it took me only 44 minutes to do this redesign. And I want to break through why I did the things I did, how I thought about this so that you can implement these the same process the next time that you're working on a website. So let's start off by breaking down what's not working in this website to begin with. First of all, I have to say number one thing is you have this uh, gray, not gray, like brown background color that completely look like a vintage photo from like the, the 20s or something. I'm not sure why they've put it this way, but it just makes everything looks old. It makes the whole navigation here not readable and it overwhelms. There's clearly brand colors here, the, like the blue and the red, and it's completely overwhelming everything with this brownish thing. So number one thing we need to get rid of. The second thing, which is very common in websites, they try to overwhelm with too many things on screen. You have this carousels of sliding messages. You have so many items in the navigations, your news, some Facebook icons, some, some of the services. So it's just too much to begin with. Now, even when you're scrolling here, you have this mess of information here, right? There are services, you have the news, you have the, the terminal project, you have this map, which by the way, mostly <laughs> look at how everything here is narrowed in this one space and most of the map shows nothing. So it just, it doesn't make sense. And let's go ahead and solve all of these problems. All right, so here's my process. The first thing I do, I start off by opening up a new Figma file and I start off by setting off a grid with 12 columns. This really enables me to create a single column or two columns, three columns, four columns, and just make sure that everything is aligned and consistent and organized on the page. So this is how I begin. Next thing is I block out where I want the hero section to be. And in this case, I want to use the brand color of blue. Again, I want to, they have strong brand colors. Let's make sure that we use them. I block out some space for the navigation because I want to make sure that the navigation is readable. So I'll make it white so it's easy to see the logo and the, the rest of the navigation. Now, I want to start off by thinking about the layout in and bring in a strong image. Now, I found on their Facebook page an image that shows a boat. This is kind of like a boating or, or port services that uses orange and uh, blue color, which almost looks like the brand color. So I think if you can use an image that uses the brand colors, it's just going to work so much well within the context of the website. So if you can, it's not always possible. You want to make sure that the colors fit. Now, I because I have these columns, I can very easily create like a split screen of six columns just to put the image. And I'm just going to try this layout. I'm going to put the image here and then I'm going to start off by uh, bringing in a value proposition. Now here they had kind of multiple value propositions in the original website. And I'm just going to go into their about page and look for a sentence that really clarifies what they're doing. I found this one creative and cost effective transport solution first rate storage facilities. So let's use that. Put it here. Now I'm going to need to make a decision on a font. Uh, originally, the website didn't have any kind of like a, a strong font face or a font that actually works with it, like with the logo themselves. Now, in this case, I'm going to try to find something that fits with the logo. I don't know what is the exact font of the logo. It looks very geometric. You can see that the O is completely round. So I'm going to try a few different geometric fonts that I know like Avenir and Futura. And in this case, I think like the closest one that I can find to the logo is Avenir. So I'm going to work with that. Now I'm going to try to set up this nice text composition where the text is uh, has enough line height, it's big enough. And the, the block of text just looks fine. I'm trying to avoid having la just a single word in the last line, which is called orphan. Um, it, when it comes to typography, I'm just going to try to find a block with you know, the, the, the amount of words and the sizing of the text and just to try to make this a nice block of text. It's worth playing around with the sizing and again, and the spacing to make sure that you have like a solid looking block of text. Now that I've got that, I can go ahead. I'm going to try to put in uh, a call to action button, just like we had at the top here for terminal access. And I want to bring in two additional images and try to have this layout here. It's kind of like a grid of photos and this block of text. Now, I'm actually not sure about this layout. So one thing that is very easy to do uh, in Figma is just duplicate the artboard, put it on the side and then try something else, right? Just try another idea. It's really easy to then compare and see what you like. So in the second 
idea that I want to try out. I'm just going to try like a full on image, a single image, and uh, and that's it. Just like one column of image with the text on the side. And then I can compare it one by one, look at them and make a decision like which alternative of the composition is actually better. I'm gonna look at them side by side and make a decision. Yeah, I actually like the right side much better. So let's go with that. I'm gonna go ahead, add the navigation. And I'm going to simplify the navigation by actually putting a bunch of the stuff uh, under services and turn that into a drop down menu. I think a lot of times, you know, people want to put just everything in the navigation, but you want to make sure you don't have more than seven items in the navigation. Otherwise, humans can't remember everything that they're seeing. So I'm going to put some of those under services and that's going to turn into a drop down menu. And uh, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to break down the next section only talk about the services because it's too much to show again like they had originally both the services and the news and everything so i'm going to dedicate the the services the next section just to services and i'm going to try and see whether two columns or three columns is best let's go with two columns and go ahead now originally they have both an image and an icon in each one of the services and this red stripe. But I actually think that's that's a little bit too much, right? Um, so what I am going to do is, and again, I'm going to try multiple things. I'm going to try to put an image and just overlay it with red color. And I set the blending mode into uh, multiply, which means that it's only going to make the image darker, right? So everything is going to be red or black. So that's how it's going to affect the image. And that actually looks good because you can clearly read the text, but also see kind of like the image which hints at the service. So I think this looks good. I test it out in blue, but I really prefer the black, the red much better. So now I can duplicate it. I can change the images and the text and we have our services section. I also decided to turn this into a, like a little bit of a card by adding a little bit of drop shadow into the uh, white part of the card just so that they are separately, um, they look more separate and stand apart. So now that we have the services, the next step is to think about the next section. And in this case, I decided that because both news and this bow um, terminal project don't have much content in them, then we can have one section that includes both of them and also stay with the two column layout that we have created. So I was thinking, how are we going to, am I going to create a line to separate or create some boxes? But at the end of the day, decided to remain with the design element that I've already created, which is this kind of like a card with a little bit of a drop shadow. If I already created, an element um, that I can repeat it for the sake of consistency and that will make the design again looks more consistent more professional so also going to make sure that I use the same typography style that are going to be consistent same body style same type of headings the same types of divider lines and the same types of read more arrows with a little bit of a this arrow uh, to learn more the more consistent I am and the more times I'm reusing elements again the design is going to look better more simple and cohesive so once that is done for the map, the only thing I'm actually going to do in the map is I'm going to just zoom in on the area that's relevant for this business, which is kind of like Western Europe. And yeah, I'm just going to use the map as is just going to zoom it. And yeah, that's it. I think that within 44 minutes, which took me to do this redesign have turned this from an old school vintage website into a modern functional website. Nothing brilliant. You don't always need to come up with a genius idea. Sometimes you just need to use the elements that we're giving to you by the client, which are images that were available on the Facebook page, brand colors and typography that were just available from the font and you can create something that's really, really solid. If you want to learn more about web design, make sure that you subscribe and check out the links in the description to learn more so that you can design websites so fast yourself. I'll see you in the next video.